Okay. Still working on evidence of the moon's origin, and we are hard at work on our table right here. We have a few bits of evidence that support some of the theories. Let's just continue on. We have just a couple more bits of evidence to discuss here. Okay, so we did one and two. Uh, evidence bit number three now. Uh, there's an idea that the Pacific Ocean, which we um, are used to here on the West Coast, is a large impact crater. Wow, huh? So what that sort of means here is if we sort of have our Earth here that looks like this, um, it turns out the Pacific Ocean, if there was sort of a large sort of crater in the Earth like that, and it got filled in with water, something like this, and now it's sort of the Pacific Ocean. Um, that's sort of evidence that something might have really hard, might have hit the Earth and made that crater. So we'll call this the, the P, the Pacific Ocean evidence. So we go back up to the table here. Uh, fission. Does fission support the Pacific Ocean crater? Hmm. Well, I'm going to say no on that because a crater is like a big hole in something is usually formed by an impact. So we're going to have a no there. But I was just thinking that maybe when something broke off the Earth, it would form a crater. But that's not typically what we classify as a crater. Capture doesn't seem to hold up because capture means Earth just captured something gravitationally that was passing by. That definitely wouldn't make a crater. Condensation doesn't make craters. But ejection does make a crater, so we'll go ahead and put a P right here. So it seems like the Pacific Island being a crater does support the ejection hypothesis that something slammed into the Earth, made that crater, then flew off into space, and that's where the moon came from. Okay. One more bit of evidence here, number four. Number four on the evidence, then, is that the moon's mantles are very similar in composition. Very similar composition. So let's draw the two and make sure we're clear on what this means. So here's the Earth. And here's the moon. OK. And where are the crate, the mantles? Well, remember, the mantles are just this outermost region of the Earth. So this is the Earth right here. And this is the moon, the outermost region. So these pink regions are similar here. So what that means then is that in this, this theory here, that these outer regions here, these are the mantles, and those are very similar in composition. Okay, so the outer surfaces are very similar in rock composition. So if you grab a rock from the surface of the Earth or a rock from the surface of the moon, they're going to be very similar. And so we'll call this, uh, let's call this the, the M, the mantle evidence. So go back up to our table here. Um, I'll put an M next to fission, I guess, because if a part of the Earth broke off, certainly the mantle would break off too, and maybe that could form part of the moon, but might have gone deeper. That doesn't support the capture hypothesis. Condensation is also not supported, but ejection there is also supported there, so we'll just put the mantle thing right here. Okay, And so that's all the evidence I have for you. So we're trying to figure out where the moon came from. And again, we need to base it on this evidence, things that we see. That's very important. And so when all said and done, the most obvious evidence is partially supported by the fission theory of something breaking off. It doesn't look like capture is getting a lot of support in terms of what we see. Maybe just a bit of coincidence in there that some of these things might match, but nothing hard and sure. Uh, condensation doesn't seem to be supported very much at all. Unless, again, coincidence of some rocks floating around the Earth being similar, but there's no reason why that would have had to happen. But look at ejection. Looks like ejection gets support by almost all the evidence we see. And remember the eye in there, which was this bit about the iron, is a bit weak, but it still makes it into ejection. So it's like all four of them are there. So you're sort of seeing um, the most likely scenario based on the scientific evidence that we see. Okay, so before I sort of narrow these down one more time, I want to show you now where all four of these things might have come from, what mechanisms cause fission, what causes capture, what causes condensation, and what might have caused ejection. Okay.